Hey guys, before we start this week's video, I want to tell you about something cool we've been working on. Over on our site, DIYCargoTrailer.com, we've been working on putting together a little bit of a course about how to build a trailer like this, kind of from start to finish. Now, we haven't figured out pricing or really any of that stuff yet, but if it's something that would interest you, then head over to the site, drop your email, and you guys will be the first to know. And I'm going to be looking for some folks to kind of test out some of this information with and get some feedback on too. So if that's you, head over to the site, drop your email, and you guys will know. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk all about plumbing. Now, again, you'll notice I'm in a pretty completed camper. And that's because our videos have lagged a good while behind the progress that we've made. But this video, we're going to talk all about plumbing. Now, this is probably going to be like a two part series. I'm going to film the second part probably a little later. Um, in this video, we're really just going to show the build progress of the plumbing. Now, I'm going to film a really specific in-depth video all about like how to plan out your plumbing system at some point, and that will be available both on this channel and on the website DIYCargoTrailer.com, and uh, you'll get everything you need to know on how to do like your own plumbing in that. But let's dive into this video, let's talk about some plumbing, and uh, spring some leaks because God knows that we sure did. So let's do it. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do here is take the sink and put it here. So I cut the hole out. So the sink came with the cool little template that I used. So first I flipped it upside down and got a little outline. You can see that's the outer line here. And then I took the template and centered it up exactly perfect inside of this. So I got that all set. Now I'm gonna take this in there and uh, do my best to cut it. All right, so I'm getting ready to cut the hole for the sink faucet. Now I've measured halfway middle point of this and that's where it's gonna go. So somewhere in this region, we're gonna drill the hole here in just a second. All right, sink is installed. Looks good. It's pretty, it's black. I like it. All right, so today we're going to work on some plumbing. Now I have to get all the plumbing done uh, today because I bought a ton of stuff on Amazon like a month ago. And today's the last day that I can return it if I don't use it. So um, some of the shark bite connections and stuff are expensive. So I wanna to try to get it done today. So if I can return anything I don't need. So let me show you what I got here. So here is my plumbing diagram. Um, now we're going to use this to uh, essentially make all of our plumbing stuff. So I have everything labeled nicely in here and we're going to go essentially top to bottom um, and get this thing going here. Two hours later. Okay, I think we're at a good, decent stopping point for the evening and I have pretty much all the plumbing done except for the, like the output, like the gray water. So let me show you what we got here. Okay, like I said earlier, this is the intake on the outside of the camper. It's mounted to the outside. It comes in and goes into a splitter and there are two valves here. We'll talk about that here in just a second. But it goes from this one, this is how we fill the, uh, the tank, right? So here is our tank and this is how we fill it. All right, so when you open that up, just like that, I haven't run any water through yet, we gotta find leaks. Um, we open that up and it goes down this path here and into the tank, right? So you can see my tank. I have four different inputs on all the different uh, corners, right? And this is where the uh, water gets filled at. From the tank, you can see that it comes out of the tank at the bottom here and goes into this silencer hose, right? So you can see this hose and it just makes a loop here and that goes into our uh, pump. Right, so it's going into the filter that came with the little strainer that came with the pump. This goes into the pump. I haven't wired this up yet, so I've got to do that. Here's my red and black wires that are going to get wired to my fuse box. But it goes into my pump and then loops again into the uh, reservoir. Okay, um, so uh, from the reservoir, it goes out. Um, I have a PEX, it connects to PEX here, and this is a one-way valve. There's a tiny little arrow on it. I'm not sure you can see that, but that little thing right there is an arrow, and it's pointing that way. Uh, and that makes it so water will not flow backwards. But why do we do that? Well, that's where this, this tube comes in, all right? So remember this other splitter up here? So this tube goes up to the splitter. So if I want to bypass my freshwater tank, 
perspective. I don't want to use my freshwater tank and I want to just use like the hookup that's at my house or at the campground or whatever. I can just open this valve and that will just send it into the system and that goes, you know, out there to the system, right? So um, that's what this little splitter is for. This is to fill the tank and use the tank. This is to bypass the tank, the pump, and the reservoir just to go straight into the system because most campgrounds have enough pressure to do that. Okay. All right, a couple other small things. This is a drain. This is a water hose right now. I'm probably gonna replace this and just do like a like a pex elbow to out and then just maybe put it out the back over there somewhere. Um, just what's easier, easier to drain, I'm not sure. Um, I also consider just doing an elbow and going straight through the floor to drain it to the floor. That might also be a decent option. I haven't decided yet. Um, a lot of people are afraid to put holes in their floor and I don't really care, so I'm happy to do that. And lastly, this last little pipe, this is an air release, right? It just goes up here just to an end, a tube end. I might put some kind of cap with some holes in it. I haven't really decided yet, but that will just stay covered. That's so as you fill the tank, it lets air out um, and it won't like, like implode on itself because it's, uh, or blow up because of the air has nowhere to go, right? So you gotta make sure you do that. Okay, so let me switch sides here and I'll show you the rest. Okay, kind of dark. Hopefully the camera will pick everything up. But um, out of our reservoir, we go out past this. There's just an elbow. Let me see if I can get around there. There's an elbow over there and it goes down to here to a splitter. And this has got a little valve on it, kind of hard to see, but there is a valve here. And this is to let us into the uh, water heater. Okay, so um, that's the cold water in to the water heater. And this is one of those portable water heaters. Um, they're, supposed to, they're supposed to be for like outdoor use only, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a hole right there and vent it out. Um, it'll be fine, a lot of people have done it before, and I've used these types of things before, and they don't actually get that hot, the units don't, so it should be fine. Hopefully it don't burn the camper down, but it should be fine. I'm gonna vent that out the back there. Um, and yeah, so then the cold water goes up, it goes into here, and this is a water filter. So I just have connections that make it go to the water filter. From the water filter, it goes up to the sink. And I've just like used zip tie things that to tack it all up. So it looks messier than it actually is. Um, this is a weird weight for the, um, the hose. So when you, uh, so when you lift up the, when you pull out the, this thing, it moves the weight up and down, which is weird. That's how it sucks it up back in there. I'm not really crazy about that because it's going to bounce around like that, but whatever. I fixed it so it wouldn't hit anything. Um, but anyway, the cold water goes up to the sink. Out of the water heater, um, it's kind of, you can't really see it, but this hose is connected. See, there are some connections down there. That one on the far left is the gas, and then that's the hot water out, the cold water in. So the hot water will come out, go through that tube there, and that connects to PEX over here, and it turns into hot water. And the hot water splits and goes to the sink, and the hot water also goes to the shower. So, let's keep going. Then over here in the shower, you can see the hot and cold water go up. They go through the, um, through the, there you can see the hot water and cold water, they come out, they go through this uh, beam here. And I just went through the crack and I used a bunch of duct tape all around it so I wouldn't, you know, slice the line into, it's just all padding around the hole basically. Um, that goes up to our um, hot and cold water for our shower, this is the, um, this is, you know, the knob, the, uh, the knob for the hot and cold water. And I just got that cover on there because it came with it and it'll keep from getting dinged up. And then that goes up to our shower up there. And I just have zip ties, like kind of holding it in place until I get all the wood and stuff, everything done in the shower. So, so that's it. That's all the plumbing. Um, it really wasn't that hard. Um, and it didn't take, but maybe a day to really do it all. Um, the hardest part is really figuring out how it all is going to fit inside of the compartments. I did move things around a little bit to try to get them the way I wanted them. And, uh, it took me a lot of time and energy to figure out fittings and we'll probably take you several trips to the, um, to the hardware store. Um, but hopefully I can help you with that down the road. So I'm going to create some cool resources for you guys. So, um, that's that. I got everything plumb. Next is the gray water stuff. I'm going to try to get that done this weekend. I went and bought some more piping and PVC to that. So I'm going to work on that tomorrow. So until then. All right. Next thing on the list, we're going to try to get these gray tanks in. So first thing I want to do is, uh, set the big one and it's going to go down there in this 
this space here, so there's a lot of foam that's in the way, and if I don't take that out, it's gonna hang down way too low. So I am gonna get under here with a mask and goggles and an oscillating saw, and I have a, um, like a pick thing too to try to like dig some of that out, and hopefully it goes well, and I don't wanna kill myself. Uh, I got the trailer all jacked up, as high as it will go. I have a extra jack for safety, and I have a car jack sitting under the frame as well. Fortunately, I cannot get them to extend any further, but I do have some extra safety protocols in place in case my jack over there fails. So, you know, it does make me a little nervous being under this trailer like this. So hopefully it goes well and I don't hurt myself. And uh, that's that. Okay, I got all that carved out. Let's see all the wood exposed now. So hopefully that will set up in there nicely and uh, we will continue on. All right, so we are prepping our tanks to get ready to hang them. And this is the, I guess, urine tank, which I kind of hate saying, sounds kind of gross, uh, but I'm getting it ready to um, hang up. So I have to put a couple things on it. So first off is the, this is the sensor to tell us how full it is. And I got a couple of these uh, cuss, I guess you say, K-U-S um, sensors. It looks like this on the insides, it's just a little float valve and it's got two wires that come out of the top of it and it just mounts into the top. It comes with everything you need, just a little gasket and some screws. And essentially I drilled the hole with a step bit that is bigger than this thing. So it'll fit in there and then you just screw it down. Then I have a plug here, a plug here, and this is where the input will be. So the liquid will come in to this hole. Um, you know, I guess I didn't mention this either. I got these little cuss gauges also, and those will go with the the sensors this will be inside the camper and then i have my electric ball valve so when i drain my tanks i just have to flip a switch to make it happen um and i'm getting ready to put that on here so i got this um this connection here that will connect to this one i just took this thing to the hardware store and got fittings that would work with it and uh um it works pretty nicely here so this is a i guess one and a quarter i think is the size of that and that will screw in here and then i will use the pvc um stuff here the cement to stick that in there and tighten it up and then that was well then my ball valve will be good to go so i gotta do this on both tanks both this tank and the gray water tank and i had to do that before we get them all hung up and uh so let's do it Oof, okay been uh busting trying to figure some electrical out here been working on the electrical of all the plumbing so let me show you what i got here so i did a couple things you'll notice that i went ahead and put in my sensor for my freshwater tank and i strapped it down um, i got uh, screws in all sides we have one two three straps going this way and two more going across the other way it is nice and secure there um, I, and then I went ahead and wired up the uh, sensor and I wired up the um, pump and I put the pump on a switch. So I flipped that switch and it goes, it was really easy to do. I just, um, I, ran out of, I ran out of wire though. So I had to use some regular Romex wire, which is no big deal, but I got that all wired up and I uh, wanted to do one first before I did all the other ones, but I wired up the, um, the gauge as well and that will show me how much water is in the fresh water tank and that is on this switch right here so i've added some switches i've done some gauges a um, couple things now i'm just going to do my last couple things which is to wire up the gauges that are going to go right here this will tell me what's in my my gray water tank and my black water tank and i'm also going to wire up the electric ball valve that's on both of those tanks as well so a few more wiring things to do not a whole lot to show in regards to doing this I think wiring something you just kind of have to figure out, um, but that's no big deal. So let's do it. Okay, well, I'm under the trailer, been working on some water, and uh, this sucks real hard, but I got it done. Let me show you what I did because this was not possible to film any of this. Okay, so here is the gray water tank and the plumbing coming out of the trailer. I'll give you a better look at that in a minute. And then there is the black water tank, and that's where the shower comes out. Let's have a look at the gray water tank first. So it's a long tank, and I peeled off all the foam. All right, you can see where I kind of pulled it back. I peeled off the foam back there, and then I used the jack, used that jack right there to hold it in place while I did at least two of these straps. Now these are 
all rated for about 120 pounds each. And I did like, see your one, two, three, four, five, six of them across, and then roll one really long one all the way down. And I used some heavy duty zip ties and all the, all the cross members. So hopefully that will hold it up. Um, I don't really know what else to do to attach it, but you know, I think that'll work. There's something similar with the black water tank as well. You can see I peeled the foam back and I used multiple straps across. And this is much tighter than it looks. It doesn't look tight based on the angles and this one's a little loose, but the rest of them are very, very tight and this thing will not move at all. So, I mean, it's very sturdy. So let me show you the plumbing. Now the plumbing was probably the trickiest part of all this because I had to deal with the shower, which came out there. And I had to deal with the sink, which comes out there. And both of those are going to the same tank right which you can see they're going into the tank there so apologies for the angles i mean i'm underneath this trailer it's like six inches of work under here it's ridiculous and i have it jacked up all the way so my sink water comes out it goes down into this p-trap with a um, clean out right so you can clean out everything and goes into the tank right here right you can see it going into the tank right there and then this is another sort of elbow coming down from the shower here and this comes down and around and goes back into the um into the uh, tank as well so this is essentially functioning as a pretty large p-trap and i hope there's enough head pressure up here to get the water to flow down and then up let's see i hope it is it doesn't actually go up that far um, the up angle is from about right here to there's a 90 degree here and then another 90 degree so Hopefully the head pressure will make the water go the direction we want it to. I guess we will see. And that's that. On our tanks, we got everything else gone. These are plugs. We got the electric uh, ball valve, right? So you can flip a switch to drain it. And then we did the same thing on the black water tank over here, just for the just for urine. That's one thing that's gonna go in the black water tank. And you can see I don't have it attached to anything yet. We will attach the toilet there with uh, with the hose and. Uh, that is that electrical tape just to cover all the wiring up really good um hopefully it will stay in place so black water is done okay i think i am ready to pressure test the plumbing which is nuts let me show you so i got my water hose all hooked up there's a pressure like regulator on here from camco a little pressure regulator just so not much too much pressure will go into the hose and I got that hooked up over here. Mm, so far so good. I hear water. I got sea water. Oh, it's got nowhere to go. Okay. All right, so we got water going into the tank. And air is coming out of the air intake. It's working! Okay, immediately, well, after five minutes or so, do we have some water right here. I think it was coming from this guy right there, which I put the uh, drill on to tighten up and now I got that nice and tight and this is damp around here so I'm going to dry this off and we're going to see I tightened all those really good so we're going to see if that fixed it I was a little concerned about this type of clamp being on this little three-way valve so we will see let me open it back up over here on the other hand is doing good I got the it looks like it's filling up pretty nicely so I do have it above all the places and I do not feel any water down here or over here, there's no dampness anywhere along there. Yep, now that, that's the drain. So if I want to drain out the tank, I can from there. And that seems like it's going pretty good too. So I'm gonna keep letting it go. And then we're gonna try out all the pump and stuff. So theoretically, I'm gonna turn this on. It should work. Holy shit, we have water. 
All right, so this is running. This is going directly from the hose. We're gonna go check out the tank underneath. Something under here. Uh-oh, I see water dripping. Is it coming from the cap? Can't really tell. Yeah, this thing was coming from here. It looks like it's draining into the tank pretty well. Sweet, I think it's working. But we do have a problem. Apparently, the path of least resistance back up into the shower, which doesn't make much sense to me. Hmm, I'm gonna have to play with that. Let's see what the hell's going on. All right, I was able to fix it. Now the shower is drained. Uh, I forgot that I put the plug back in, which is going to cover the hole that the air can come out of. So once I took the air, air once I let the cap out of the top of the uh, gray water tank, um, it sucked a bunch of air in, or I guess it let the air out. And uh, it, um, yeah, so the shower drained nicely. And there is plenty of head pressure, so that does kind of solve that issue that I was concerned about, So, which is good. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this dive into plumbing. Now, this was really just the, the build progress, right, of the plumbing. Just like with electrical, I'm going to do an entire separate video all about the ins and outs of planning your own plumbing system, how to make those diagrams and all that cool stuff. And that will be available both on the channel and on the website, DIYCargoTrailer.com. So be sure to check that out. You also note that we didn't cover the water heater in extensive detail in this video. And that's because that's kind of its own topic in and of itself that I've done a lot of experimentation with um, and some changes to my initial design and how I set it up probably partially in this video so um, be sure to be on the lookout for our, our water heater video where we really cover everything about um, the water heater system that we that we set up um, the plumbing all works really good I did have some leaks I highly recommend you buy like a big huge fan like one of those floor fans so you can run it um, you know we just got back from our first trip testing out the camper and I've actually had my my mini split in kind of uh, like dehumidify mode I'm gonna run a fan in here and uh, you know, have it in dehumidify mode just to kind of get any water that might be in the walls and all that sort of stuff out um, and it's really dry now so you know um, I'm pretty pleased with it the plumbing all works I don't know what else I could ask for um, so I guess that's just gonna be about to do it if you like this content you want more like it be sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, until next time may the force be with you friends